Hi, welcome to the channel and welcome to my allotment. If you're not a regular to the channel, let me explain a little bit. This is my 150 square meter plot of allotment land. Six weeks ago, it looked like that. And we've worked tirelessly hard to get it into a position where we can grow a few vegetables this season. But more so, what we're trying to do is prep it and develop it so come the start of next year, we can make a real go on the whole plot for growing fruits and veggies, which is where this video comes into the fray. You see, somebody has kindly offered me a polytunnel that's going to go on this plot and be absolutely perfect for seeding things comes the start of next year. The only problem with it is the gentleman lives in the far north reaches of the UK. But knowing me, I figured that gives us a great excuse to get up into the Yorkshire Dales, find a pucker little spot for the night, maybe have a little bit of an explore around grab the polytunnel, bring it back and set it up. We do, however, need to do a few things before we leave. There's no way I can go out in public anymore looking like this, it's ridiculous. I'm looking like a sad porn star from the 70s with this haircut. We need to go and get it sorted. On top of that, crib needs sorting out and because uh, I've got to take the polytunnel apart when I get up there, I'm going to have to bring Sarkit Bob with me. There's no choice. I need someone who's capable, knows what they're doing, and can tell me what to do. And she ticks all the boxes. So first things first, let's go sort out the mop. Ah, game on. This should do the job. The local Sweeney Todd. Here he is. All right, Mel Mark. How are you going? Yeah, not too bad. Oh. Ah, and finally, looking human. Both of us, no less. Right. We do need to prioritise. Car loaded and a psychic bobbing toe. Next step. Oh, well, the crib's all loaded up with, can you believe, just a minimal amount of equipment for this evening's proceedings. <laughs> I'm actually hoping I can get the polytunnel in here once we've taken it down, but now I've got all this stuff in here, I've no idea where it's gonna go. But more importantly, the boss is in the house. <laughs> Oh yes, sidekick Bob in the fray, which is good news because now we have all the direction we can possibly need, i.e. the boss's direction. Do as you're told and we should be alright. And apparently the number one command from the boss is, shut your mouth, put your foot down and let's get up north. So let's do that. Oh my days, still an hour to go. I'm probably the most crappiest drive I've done of late. It's just pure motorway, it's driving me nuts, but I have had something to cheer me up. I've just passed, oh, possibly the only adult pawn shop on any motorway in the whole of the UK. Totally legendary. I'll try and get a shot of it because I missed it, but it's the A1 pawn shop. I can't imagine it gets much business these days. I mean. Who buys you for daddly bits in a shop anymore? Like sneaking in in a trench coat with your shades on and some sort of bowler hat to try and disguise yourself. Now, it's 2024, there's internet. It's random as anything, but it's been there for years. It remains to be there. Not that I've ever frequented it or checked it out, but I will show you a spot of it in case you want to. More importantly, because we're about an hour away from the spot I want to be at for tonight, I've already instigated the plan of action. And here it is. Tomorrow morning, around 10, 10, 30, we need to be at the gentleman's allotment to pick up the new home for the vegetables. That means tonight we need to procure a spot so we can actually sleep and get no bother and get up in the morning. I've found a spot. It looks a legend. It's all on the Yorkshire Moors with amazing views all around. There is, however, a bit of an issue with it. It's on a firing range or a live firing range for the army. And I tried to obtain some information on the internet about it and found sod all. So I'm just gonna have to drive up there, hope the road's not blocked, and if it's not, we can stay there, and then hope again that in the morning we're not surrounded by the army telling us to get off their land. Also, even though it's supposed to have absolutely legendary views all around, we're probably gonna get there near dark. So we might not see it tonight, but we might get a shot of it for the morning. And let's see how we go. Yeah, we think we might have landed. Uh, apparently we're going off Crags Lane onto Hawks Lane. Ah, oh, yes. Countryside names. Gotta love them. I bet there's a sparrow pit around here somewhere. Tanks turning. <laughs> uh, that's building confidence. Not. Three miles. 
Hey, wicked. We've lost the dashes in the middle of the road and we're heading up to the Whipperdale Bank. Game on. Oh, poo sticks. We've got company for the night and it's big company. I hope they ain't took the whole spot. It looks a rather large spot. Good. It would have been nice to have had it to ourselves. <sighs> well, what can I say? What a spot. Yes, mate. Oh, absolute. Oh. There is a bit of wind. Quite a bit of wind. <laughs> what? That's going to be interesting in the roof tent tonight. And we've got no other option. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, it has got a puck of you all around. Right up on the moors. I wish we'd have been here about an hour earlier, but somebody <clears throat> was doing their hair. No, not me. Somebody was actually in the shower doing their hair. But we should get a wicked view in the morning, if it's clear. And maybe about half an hour tonight, if I'm quick setting the tent up. Ah, oh, nice one, Bob. And at the back. Ew. Oh. Let's see how much it blows. Mm, not too bad. Got to say as well, this is quite funny. I was driving up here and I was just thinking like, Bob's never been to Yorkshire or the Yorkshire Dales, anywhere around here. And to come up here all the way just for one night, pick up that tent thing, polytunnel, and then head back. Seems a little bit of a shame. I think we might end up staying at least one more night. But neither of us have got any clean clothes or change of clothes or whatever. You'll be all right just flicking your pants around like one night, won't you, Bob? You do it normally anyway, don't say you don't, I've seen you do it. No, no, I got a few pants, don't worry. You got spare pants? <laughs> yeah, but well, I forgot to bring the shirt. You've not I brought a shirt or anything, but you brought spare pants. Why yeah. bought spare pants? Did you think you might <laughs> miss fire or something at some point? <laughs> well, look, if the worst comes to the worst, you might have to lend me a pair. I don't know, I'll be all right, I'll flip mine inside out. No, no, I'll work it work. Right, let's get the ladder out and let's get some chilling and blinging going on. I've took the liner out, so it might be a bit cold tonight, but we have got the projector. Well, the sun's about down, I've got to say. It's looking pretty chilling in here, Bob, with the old light up, thing ready for the projector, even though it's got very limited power, and the old fairy lights. Done us proud with this little setup, and like I said, took the liner out from the winter, and yeah, it's still nice and warm in here, it's not too bad. I've even got a few munches. Couldn't resist. Always need a bit of sugar or chocolate in the late evening. But yeah, I think we're just going to chill and get a movie on. And we'll catch you guys in the morning when it's a little bit more daylight. Oh, that flagpole is going to be rocking all night long. Bugger. Morning, and what a morning it is! Da, 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 da. Check out the views this morning. Oh, they've completely disappeared behind the cloud. Sneaky bit of a midsummer storm rolled in last night at about midnight. A little bit of drizzle coming down, and I thought it was going to clear, but uh, evidently it didn't. The only problem with this is it might be a light drizzle, but it still made everything wet. So trying to take that polytunnel down later is going to be rather interesting putting a massive wet polytunnel in the back of the crib. But now though, oh yes. It's all about the fried breakfast. And coffee, please. Please, Bob, I need coffee. Oh. Morning, no, no, don't put the camera in my face. I've still woke up and I've not put my face on yet. I think that's how it works. Anyway, breakfast, coffee, and then we're on the road for the polytunnel to Darlington and down towards the Yorkshire Dales, mate, and the coastline. I'm very tempted. Let's see how we go. Oh, this is a nightmare. I've got, I've got Ian on the bloody camera. Look how tight this thing is. He's telling me to come through it. Oh, you sort of do it like that, mate. Blimey. Oh my days. Uh, yeah, I'm stuck. I can't move my car. Hang on. Shit, I've just took my mirror out. 
Oh my oh, god. I'm alright, fella. I'm alright. I'm through. Golden Bennett. Damage to the car. We took a scrape. Woo! <laughs> Here he is. The main man. We've met him. Bless you. Well, can't deny a little bit of a beaming smile on my face at the moment because dun, da, 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 our new polytunnel. Oh my goodness, this thing is amazing. <laughs> Let me show you around the new home for the vegetables. Well, at least for the seedlings, it's pretty good. It's actually four meters long, which is a really good size. Two meters high and two meters wide, and it's gonna be absolutely perfect for our allotment. Let me show you quickly how it can look once it's been lived in, so to speak. Because Ian actually has one over here, and it's a good job that Psychic Bob's with us because she's practical, and she's been checking out the wooden door frame that we're gonna build, and, and a few other things that we needed to know in here. But yeah, look, I mean, this is how it can look once you've got a few things in. Fans running on solar panels, a little bit of battery power for a few more fans down here on solar panels. These are some of the things that we're really going to need to get. And a little bit of a no dig going on on, on the right hand side with cucumbers and tomatoes. And it very be the seedlings. Well, they're not, they're lettuce. Fantastic, really is. It's going to be great. We do, however, need to take it apart and fingers crossed hope we can get it back in, or rather in the back of the crib. Let's find out. Ah, well, good news, good news, and a bit of a weird one. Good news is, we've got the polytunnel, and the good news is, it actually fits in the back of the crib. The weird one is, I'm about to tweak the timeline of the Paradoxal Atrium's multiverse. Yeah, I know, it sounds weird, doesn't it? But let me explain. See, what I was gonna do, and what I will do, on this episode and video now, is head back towards Leicester and possibly stop off at somewhere on the way, and then show, us, show you guys us putting up the polytunnel on the actual allotment back in Leicester. In the real world, because we've come all the way up here, it seems a shame not to spend at least one more decent night uh, up here and do a few things. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to head down towards Robin Hood's Bay and possibly go for a little bit of a hike around and find a pucker looking car camping spot for the night. That is the next video. In this video, I'll see you on the flip side in a second oh, when we're heading south. It's all very confusing, not only for you, but also me that's actually doing it. Anyway, see you on the flip side. Bob, it's this way. Bloody hell. Got the direction of a blind seal. That way. Well, I'm not going to deny, when I had the idea of coming here to this spot, I thought it was going to be about a 45 minute drive from where we were before. It wasn't. It was about a two hour, 20 minute drive, which meant I could have pretty much already been all the way back to Leicester in it. But here's the thing. This place is well worth it. We're up in the Yorkshire Dales and welcome to the Druid's Temple. This place is amazing. For those of you that are regular to the series, you may remember it way back when, when we came here. And as amazing and insanely set out as it looks, and I was scratching my head with it when I first came here, this is just a folly. There was a guy that owned the estate round here a few hundred years ago, absolute schminted with gold and decided just to build a few things around here on his land when he fancied one of these i mean it's like the best druid's temple ever i mean you should have some mini raves here it'd be insane and even in the back somewhere out here is well i don't know it's looking like a dinner table here at the minute the last time i came here i was pretty convinced it was a sacrifice table but uh let's hope there's none of that going on today because i'm with psychic bob the boss we need to be on our best behaviour. What a blooming place though, eh? Wicked, mate. Ooh. It's got a gnarly little cave at the back as well. Let me grab my torch. 
can't deny <laughs> look at this it's been an age since we've not had one and now we've got a decent torch and it usb like charges it's got some rechargeable battery thing going on in there are these George Parker? oh my days this feels like an old school rpg game from the 80s or something do, 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 do. oh goblin no oh i used to love them there was one called alternate reality on the atari st it was probably out on the commodore 64 as well pretty sure it's called alternate reality and yeah that was probably the original one of the original rpgs some of you guys have got to remember out there you got to be as geeky as i am it was wicked it was like some dude and he got zapped up into space at the start just a cutscene, nothing mad and then all of a sudden he was in a world of goblins and dragons and it was oh if you played it now absolute chaff but it was top back in the day they even had dlc an expansion pack it was a second game but yeah more about this place the Druid's Temple wicked man if you're up here seriously like uh, North York Moors I think up above the Pateley Bridge I think I've just seen that on the map but yeah it's on the map the Druid's Temple is what it's called there's also a really nice walk that goes around here and I think there's a few other bits that you can check out as well along the route but for now yeah this is us we need to get back and get on the allotment. Mate, I'm excited. A new home for the vegetables. And I've even got an idea where I'm gonna put it. Well, good news, good news, and bad news. The good news is we're back at the allotment ready to put the polytunnel together. The other good news is we've got all the pieces. The bad news is there's a lot of those pieces, a lot of tools required to put this thing together. It shouldn't be too complicated, and I did make a video to tell me where to put each pole. As long as I've not deleted that, we should be okay. Where we're gonna put it, well, that's a bit debatable. You see, we'd love to put it over here. That's a prime spot where the peas are growing and the rhubarb. So that can't really happen at the minute. So instead, we've decided to put it down this length here. Reason being, I can get a polytunnel in there and at the far end, a shed and in between, I'd like to have a table and chairs. So at some point I can just come down here in the morning, make a coffee and sit out and admire and peruse over my land. Thing is, if I was to do it along this length, how it'd work out, I'd have a shed blocking my view one side and the polytunnel the other. That seems a prime spot. I've just got the view right out across everything. It does sound idyllic. We do have one problem though. We gotta put the bloody thing together first. Oh crap. <laughs> I've just watched the video. Uh, it seems I thought I might know a little bit more than I do know. That video of crap, totally useless. Guess we'll just guess as we go along. At least I know where the curve bits go. Again? <laughs> You're useless. <laughs> Me what are you doing, Grandad? Here. Don't drop that nut. Where's the nut? You haven't dropped that nut, are you, Grandad? Yeah, already. Oh, my God. World of pain. Oh, you still got it? Yes. There. Don't drop it. Oh, my God. Here we go. Careful. Do, 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 do. Teamwork makes the dream work. Family. Oh, my cheese. All right. Yeah, yeah. You just stand there and hold it. <laughs> Coffee break. Oh no, it started raining. Hurry up, Bob. Well, good news. The polytunnel is all up and ready to go. 
Uh, except for it's not, is it? We just put the tarp over and put a few tyres on and a little gust of wind came and blew the whole thing off, ripping one of the tyres off the, uh, the actual tunnel. So now we're going to take the precautions that we should have took. There's a few other rip poly tunnels around these plots and essentially what the good ones have done is buried it underground. There was one over the way there that was found in a field a couple of weeks ago that wasn't obviously done quite right. Essentially what the secret is, is a castle style trench. We're going to dig it about two inch deep and about a foot wide, bury everything framework in there. And then once we get the tarp on, we need to pull the tarp super taut and bury it under the ground. On top of that, four heavy stakes, one in each corner that's going to grip tight to the framework. I'm not saying it's 100% foolproof, but I think they're the precautions we need to take. I'm just following the leader, Bob. Bob knows what she's doing. And you think I'm joking as well, don't you? Bob used to work on a building site back in the day. So she has got a lot more skills than, than well, me, obviously. Um, there's a bit of a heated debate going on. Let me explain. Um, trench is about dog. Four posts are in. It's looking fantastic. Uh, we have, however, come across a bit of an issue. See, last night in the dark, when we were doing it, we were just more focusing on actually building the thing as to where we were going to place it. And it just ended up that it's been placed and built where it stood and not moved. However, uh, it's not the bloody edge of the plot, is it? We're about two foot in, all the way round. In terms of design, it's a major flaw, to be honest. <laughs> um, it would have been a lot better being absolutely in the corner. However, I think what we'll do is plant some stuff along the back of it, maybe some runner beans or sweet corn or something like that. The hope is, that we can do that all the way along this length to try and stop the flow of all these wildflowers. Found out this morning, this is privately owned and the person who owns it just wants to keep it wild. So there's nothing we can do about that apart from trying to stop it blowing over and high growing stuff might do that. So yeah, we're not gonna be moving the polytunnel again because Bob just said if we have to, she's going home and I can't do it on my own. I think we'll just finish the trench, get the top on and we should be about done. Eight hours of driving, one hour to take it down, and six hours to put it back up. And finally, the polytunnel's in full effect. And I've got to say, I'm really, really chuffed with it. How about you, baby? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it is fantastic. And I think we've done a pretty good job. We had a big storm last night, not massive, but we've come down this morning and it's held up really well. I honestly think I'm gonna start loading it up with shelving and gold knows what, so I can try and plant some stuff in there now and maybe grow some stuff at least late in this season and maybe through the winter. We'll have to see where we go with it. But for now, I think this is gonna be the best point to end the episode. As all that chaff is blowing over onto my plot on this little breezy day in the summertime, I genuinely really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, all the good stuff, hit the like button, subscribe to keep up with the series and definitely hit me in the comments and whatever you're getting up to. Take it easy, enjoy the camp and stay stealthy. <laughs>